All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the February 9th uh, Chaos DEI Working Group Meeting 2022. It's great to have you here. Uh, if you could add yourself to the agenda, that would be wonderful. Um, I'll put the minutes back in the chat. Hello, Nicole. Or Good morning. How's it going? Good morning. Good morning. Good. How are you? Good. So Elizabeth just put the minutes back in the chat. There are a few things that we need to kind of address today. I think today, uh, I think our items are, the first one is uh, something from DEI badging. The second is about taking retaking a look at our metrics again and just trying to get some closure on some that are moving forward. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about the .github stuff. Hey, Shoya. Talk about the .github stuff that we are also kind of approving, moving forward with in the community. So it's pretty cool. And I think the, the reason I'd bring it up here is because Justin had brought it up here last time. And uh, I think it standardizes a few things from an issue template. Uh, and then it also, I think it, it's a way for us to distribute the code of conduct more evenly in the project, um, so, which is good for us. So, all right, cool. All right, so who put this first one? I can share my screen. Elizabeth, put the first one up here. Uh, you want to go ahead and talk us through that a little bit? Sure. Um, it, so this was, there's an issue linked there um, that was put in the DEI badging repo um, a few months ago. And there was some discussion. And I think Matt um, Cantu also had acknowledged that it's, it's a gap in our DEI badging. Um, initiative um, is this um, idea around accessibility at events. And I know we've talked about it a lot, um, but we had we really don't have any metrics to for the DEI badging program to use in the checks. So um, I kind of bumped this up to the queue. Sorry, I know I totally probably messed up the whole process. So it's not anywhere else but the spreadsheet. And then I have a working doc that I started with the metrics template and I just started it. So I don't know if it needs to go anywhere else, but within the spread, is it in here? Yeah, event accessibility right there. In progress, go on oh. down. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Um, um, I hope that's okay, but it's really like empty. The um, metrics template only has a few things I've added in, um, so I'll continue to work on that, and then I'll bring it back to the group for this thing. If that's cool. This. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the issue was that the badging work group would like to include this in the badging process. Correct. And there's nothing really for us to point got it. to. So, got it. That makes a ton of sense. And I think this is this works well too because. Um, as we have the metrics models, you know, so I, it, so we have a, a working group called metrics models, which is a working group that talks about how we bring different individual metrics together in meaningful ways for people. Uh, and we're working on a variety of different metrics models. We have this tab here. And so these are the metrics models and they bring together metrics in a variety of different ways. Um, and DEI event badging is one of those metrics models because it inherently brings together <laughs> a collection of these metrics into the badging program. So the DEI badging program is itself a metrics model. Um, and so we've, we've kind of come up with a workflow that says if the metrics model would like to add a new metric to the model, meaning that there's a gap in the model perhaps, or there's just something that could be improved in the model, the, the, they send the request to probably the most respective working group that would handle that additional metric. So I think, Elizabeth, you're just kind of following that approach. The, the DEI badging group is essentially a whole group dedicated to just that model, which is interesting, um, and then kind of pushing this back to the DEI working group. 
Correct. And I know that the DEI working group in particular has a very large backlog of ideas. So I hope that that's okay that I kind of bump that up because it's kind of something that I personally wanted to work on. Yeah, I have no problem with that. And whoever moved this row up to the other yellow, thank you. <laughs> so that it wasn't the yellow row just hanging out in the in the red row spaces. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I had it as considering because I want I want like wanted to check with this group to make sure before I made, moved it in progress. Did it automatically change to in progress when I added the doc? Is it that smart? No, no okay. I made the executive decision that it's ready for the in progress label, <laughs> and then I changed it, and then it okay. needs to be moved. <laughs> you know, actually, before I came to this meeting, I'm like, I'm like, because we have these things, we have all these workflows, which is like like what you're talking about here. You know what I mean? And um, another workflow is like when we review a metric and then get it back out. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'm like, oh, I wish we could just like make buttons. That like <laughs> I could just put, do the thing and then it just does the, whatever the thing is. <laughs> There's still so much manual work. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, do you want to talk about this at all right now, Elizabeth? Or is it is it just something that um, not project demographics, event accessibility. Is it something that you want to talk about now or do you just want to work on it and then maybe bring it back to the group? Um, I was going to work on it and bring it back to the group because I didn't want okay. to take the time since it is so early. You know, I just had some initial thoughts, um, but yeah. and we do have other stuff to talk about. So it's okay. totally fine. No, that's that's all good. Um, all right, cool. When When is our release? Do we know? For the... DEI badging or for chaos? For chaos. April? April. Okay. So the whole is would that be it we do we have to go backwards again? Is the release in April and then we would have to do review in um March? Yes. Yeah, yes. I think the freeze is in March and then the 30 day happens and then April is the Okay. All right. Was well Sounds good. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, so it's kind of soon. Okay. I can crank it out. Some of these are, sometimes they're not that difficult to articulate, is my thought. So that's what I'm okay. thinking. It's pretty straightforward. Right. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, the next thing I thought we could maybe spend a little bit of time today kind of working through project demographics. Um, so it, no, your, the indenting is a little different. So event, so we have event demographics. I was only putting event demographics in there just because it could serve as an example for project demographics. So we have event demographics as a released metric. And if you recall, as part of this process, we used to have speaker demographics and attendee demographics here. And we said, that's just too much to, it's silly to keep these separate. Why don't we just have something called event demographics, which we have at this point. So sometimes to the point we were just talking about, um, it's, it's kind of easy sometimes if we have metrics that are similar to one another to almost just copy and paste what we have i'm not saying just do this but like copy and paste what we have in event demographics and put it in project demographics and then just find and replace <laughs> event with project you know what i mean like some of them kind of go from one to another pretty easily and i was hoping we could spend a little bit of time to kind of articulate um, project demographics and we can do that by hmm, wherever i put it Well, let me just come back here. I guess I closed it. You know, I'm looking at the event demographics metric, and it might be worth it to take um, event demographics and kind of put the project part in there, but it doesn't seem like it's super specific to events in that metric. Um, so it might be worth it to differentiate them in both directions, like to the event side and to the project side, because this one kind of is 
the current event demographics metric can be generalized pretty well. So right now, the only you think the only di clear differentiator is that is like, like the title, yeah. Okay, and then maybe some some I think these references, you know what I mean. Speaker the filters things. are specific to events too. Okay. All right. Well, could we maybe, without touching this one first, could I maybe um, pause the recording for a second, and then we spend just a few minutes with like specifically measuring demographics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think if if I come back here and look, you can see that the data collection. This is in the event demographics. It's really just about a, you know they have the there's an opportunity obviously in events to ask demographic information on registration, um, but then you could also do it during an event, and so I just I'm not sure that any of these types of questions really are applicable. But I do know that when it comes to demographics, surveying is really big, and it might be a good thing to focus on. Yeah. I mean, I was wondering if we could use as examples, we have the open demographic questions. We have um, the questions that were asked for the LF DEI survey. There were some demographic related questions there as well. And I think we spent quite a bit of time on that. So if I don't know if anybody has that accessible, probably not immediately. Um, yeah, exactly. So I, th I think this one at this moment is really the only way that we can get this data. I don't understand. I don't know that there's really any other way that we can get this data. Elizabeth, do you have thoughts on this? I know we've talked about this before. I, I mean, you, you could try to gather um, simple things like location, uh, like in the GitHub, like if someone has given you that information, but it's, you know, it's, it's not great data. Like it's, you know, totally can just, people can put earth, you know, for their location. So it's not super, super helpful to do that, but you can do it if you don't have any other way to do it. Not only that, but we're also promoting good ethics. And I feel like consent is a really big part of data collection. Uh, so I feel like surveyed with explicit consent really is the only thing I can, I, I could think of Yeah, I agree. And I think with events, you have a few opportunities to do that, perhaps even more so than you do with a project, to be honest with you, because you have to register for an event. You don't have to register for a project. Um, so I, my, my, my thought was, was yeah, the, that we could just build this out a little bit and give some real examples of questions that could be asked with respect to demographics for a project. Yeah, and I guess I was kind of taking this a little bit, I might have been a, bit, a little confused, um, meaning I was taking this a little bit differently when I was going through it. It was, oh, we're, we're trying to, I don't know if I was taking it as demographics as much as we're really trying to query folks as to uh, folks within a given community uh, as to whether or not they think that particular project's community is diverse and inclusive. Gotcha. Um, like yeah. a, per a perception versus like asking right like what has been your experience in xyz project do you feel like it's it has your experience within a particular project been uh you know uh adhered to the principles of diversity equity and inclusion so a point well taken we I don't know, Nicole, if you can see my screen or not, but we have yeah. we have um, a metric called inclusive experience at an event, which is kind of, I think it's in line with what you're talking about. Now that's granted, it's only at an event, but I mean, we could, 
with respect to project and community. What about this one, psychological safety? Oh, that may, yeah. Yeah, I I think that probably, um, just kind of looking at it here would would uh, would probably fit the the closest to what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. This is, it maybe it's a little bit different. I'm wondering if we should have like an ex inclusive feeling within a project or something like that or. So um, I see psychological safety as a safety net in case it may be preventative or responsive to issues, like it's centered around issues. I added an, a, a considering item for project operation inclusivity. That's just a name I'm throwing out there. Or like oh, in the spreadsheet right under uh, project demographics. But uh, I'm thinking like, w when I think about this, this is, this is a gap for sure. And uh, it could be like, um, how do, how welcoming is your project? As simple as that. I mean, that could be the question even. Mm -hmm. That's actually a metrics model is welcoming this um, in a project. So yeah, that's why I put operation too, because it has yeah. to be something specific. Like uh, what, what efforts does your project take to uh, ensure that it's welcoming uh, to new community members? It has to be kind of specific, but yeah. Oh, here, this right here is a metrics model. A good word. Gotcha. Um, but I think, uh, Nicole, your point is certainly super well taken, and I don't think we're capturing it the way that we should be. And I think this is a candidate for one of two directions. One is to build it out as a new metric as matt had started here in row 66 yeah. and then also think about it in relationship to this row 20 with respect mm -hmm. to community welcomingness that makes sense okay cool great i'm i'm not sure if i um missed this kind of discussion but have we discussed the border borderline of um like what is a project or project community um, because I, I'm not sure uh, if this would influence the, the way how we collect the demographic data like uh, we can send uh, we can we, we, we can we can um, proceed this by sending surveys but if we have a more clear uh, boundary of uh, the community or project members, maybe there are some other way, like um, there is a, a, a email address of each commit, commit log, and yeah. Yeah, I, I understand your point, Shoya. Um, I don't, I don't know that we have ever specified boundaries of projects. To your point, like, what what constitutes um yeah like um has it to be a software because um i right. know many many open source communities that does not involve a software mm -hmm. so i'm not sure what kind of project community that we are discussing now. yeah go ahead elizabeth i was just gonna say we might want to leave that up to the the project and let them decide, but we should maybe give them guidance or like a prompt. So when I think about chaos, like you can define cha the chaos project in a few different ways. You know, you could either you look at like the auger community within chaos is its own separate little bubble. And so we would maybe, you know, address that differently than we would like the whole chaos project. So, but that's specific to us. So I think it would be really hard to to define a project for everyone. But I think we could, I think you're totally right, Shoya, and I think maybe we could say a project should be defined prior to, or your your community should be defined by you prior to in, in, you know, embarking on this journey or something like that to kind of give people the 
heads up like, oh yeah, I should probably think about what is what do what do I mean when I say my project community? Yeah, that's that's totally fair. But I'm not sure if this this would make it difficult for us to de to defining the metrics to like how to collect data because we we are not sh it's not very clear the object we are discussing. Yeah, I think this this is definitely a great point. Um, we have we we have a certain idea of what we think a project is, and it's from someone coming completely outside of the chaos project looking at this metric, it would be like. Um, well, what does that mean to you? Maybe we could just add a definition of what what the, the kind of lens we're approaching it with when we're talking about a project. Is that? What... I think yeah. I think that's the request. Because I listening to this conversation, like I was thinking, when we were in Seattle, right, and we had Chaos Con, and there's fifty people. At ChaosCon, or is that the community? I think about the work that Shoya is doing in China with the meetups, <laughs> and like, is that community? Like, to me, it's it yes. On on Slack, we have over two hundred people that are on the Slack in in different channels on on our Slack org. Like, are they all community members? Like, it's just there are certain there are certain like obvious times when somebody is a community member, but then as you build out like these rings or these layers, I think it's a little bit harder to to define. I think we have done work somewhere in defining the roles. So maybe that would fit in this piece. Oh uh, okay. Yeah. I don't I don't know where that work is. I don't remember. This can be something that I can take a look at before next week. You know what I mean? Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, okay. I'm going to, if it's okay, I'm going to stop it here unless somebody has a burning comment. It's just so, because we have a few other things that I'd like to get through on the agenda. So, all right. Well, thank you everybody for your feedback. I think there's a lot of things for me to think about. Um, and we'll talk about this more next week. All right. Um, how about onboarding update? In there. <clears throat> Ruth and I were just, Ruth and I have been working on this. Um, and we just wanted to give you all a quick update on some feedback that we are getting um, from doing the office hours. So Ruth has um, been working with me and showing up to the office hours as well, which is super, super helpful to have more than one person there. Um, so we have had um, the last few weeks, we've had four or five people at each office hour um, and we'll continue to do that. And I know that that's um, kind, of, um, kind of a symptom of uh, GSOC starting up. And so a lot of them are hopeful GSOC students, but not all of them. So um, it's been really interesting. Um, we had started a doc, um, which I can drop, I should have opened this earlier, sorry, um, of what kind of some themes that have been coming up. And I just, we were gonna share them with you. Um, some quick, quick um, ideas that we had from these office hours. Um, some of our terms that we are using internally are confusing to people. Um, for instance, the term working group um, was a confusing term and we don't define what that means anywhere. So um, we kind of thought maybe like, I know we've had this discussion about having a glossary and um, that's gone back and forth, but I think from a newcomer perspective, just being able to see or be able to find that, what, what even is a work, I don't even know what a working group means. Like that's, you know, I think something that we should maybe could build out for that purpose. Um, also, it was not clear to people what each working group does. Um, we don't really have a doc that just says, here are our working groups in like one sentence. We have the participate page, which has a little bit about them, but it's not super clear. And it's kind of hidden at the bottom of that page. So um, that was something that has been brought up as something we could do. Um, some of the, um, the auger installation docs are in need of some help because I think they're very confusing and inaccurate um, in a few places. So uh, I know Sean is super busy, but that might be something 
that he wants to work on for GSOC, maybe an idea. I don't know. Um, and then the last one I'll just mention was um, we, we've had a, quite a few people coming in from OSPOs and I, I'm just wondering if there's something specific we can do for them. Um, I know, and I, you know, I always mention the metrics models and that's where, you know, a kind of the OSPO groups tends to gravitate toward, but um, that time is not super convenient for anybody in Europe to join. And we don't really have another outlet. Like we don't have a Slack channel. We don't have any kind of other way for them to network with each other. And I think that that would be a really interesting thing um, for us to provide is like that hub for OSPOs to kind of connect um, asynchronously or you know, even in, in a, another meeting, I don't, I don't know if we want to do another meeting because <laughs> we have plenty at chaos, but um, just wanted to bring that, just wanted to surface that up that we've had, you know, quite a few people from OSPOs um, as those kind of proliferate throughout the corporate, corporate world. So that's it. So um, I had a few comments on this. One was, it seems like we have maybe two challenges as people come to the office hours there are people who want to contribute but it's difficult to understand where to contribute so i think we need to work on like really like i know we have the label like good first issue and all that kind of stuff but like maybe really being specific like hello to the person here's where we think would be a great place for you to i don't know there's something just really explicit in terms of how to participate. That was one thought. Do you have a comment on that, Elizabeth? Oh, I was just going to say, so we have that form that's pretty, you know, it like asks how familiar they are, where they want to contribute, like what their background kind of is, you know, all of that. So we do keep track of that information. What's curious is that most people um, are brand new to chaos, but want to start immediately. And I think that that's challenging because like a lot of our things are a little more in depth. Like you kind of have to get to know chaos before you you can't just go in and fix an issue. You know, you, it takes a, it's a little more uh, complicated onboarding than here's a, here's a, you know, list of software issues you can just go fix. Right. So I think that's our challenge is like okay. explaining kind of what we do because we're not the typical software project. And I think, you know, especially some of the students that are coming in are used to seeing like, oh, Kubernetes. Okay, here we go. You know, but we're not like that at all. And so differentiating ourselves a little um, in, a, in a good way, I think is, is gonna be challenging for us. So okay. anyway, when we, we have that form and they fill it out, I do email or hit them up on Slack and we chat. Okay. So there is that personal connection and I'm That's hoping good. that, yeah. And they've, okay. you know, when they come to office hours we talk a little more one-on-one -on -one or, you know, here are, here's what we are about. And now that you know, think of ways that you might want, or, you know, the group that you might want to kind of align yourself with. So you do do that. Like it's a yeah, personal yeah. fly thing. Okay. I didn't oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then do you, if they don't, if a newcomer doesn't respond, do you follow up like maybe one time? And I mean, there's only, there's a point where you can't keep. Yeah. Um, I think that's something Ruth and I will work on together okay. because we've had, you know, a, a, quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In. And so um, it's okay. a little overwhelming to do that, but um, I think that it can be done. And I, I would like to, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Like okay. Um, and then the other thing that it sounds like, like with respect to OSPOs, like I wonder sometimes folks who are in OSPOs are oftentimes in um, leadership positions. And I feel like sometimes they, they come to chaos like as a, as a potential resource to help in their OSPO, which is different than contributing to chaos. <laughs> and so yes, it, it's a slightly different newcomer experience. <laughs> yes, it's, you're absolutely right. We, we kind of have these two buckets, people who want to use the metrics and people who want to help develop the metrics or contribute mm -hmm. to the software. So, you know, finding that onboarding path for both of them is our challenge. Mm -hmm. And I and I think that as we make, build those toolkits out that we're doing in the um, in the metrics models, that yeah. will help. But we but I think there's still like we still have people who are new come to those office hours who even just want to use the metrics and don't want to contribute. So yeah. I, that's challenging. And I'm not sure yet how to address okay. that funnel. 
I don't either, but it, this is good because it, it'll give me something to think about or all of us to think about just in terms of the newcomer experience. Um, okay, cool. Um, you know, I, as, oh, oh go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I, I had something kind of peripheral to say. Well, as, as Elizabeth, as you were talking through that, what I was reminded of was my, my experience in the OpenStack community and, and they did a really good job of, and in fact, they actually did a session at one point, I believe, around how many different uh, channels, mediums, methods um, they had for onboarding. And I wonder if, um, if it would behoove us, especially since Amy uh, marriage is a uh, part of this, to um, and she's so <clears throat> still still immersed uh, deeply in that community. If we might be able to kind of um, leverage her uh, experience as well. Um, because there were different uh, streams for, you know, depending upon uh, your where you're coming from, what you're wanting, that sort of thing. They kind of had some. I felt like it. I felt like they did a great job and were very unique in having so so many different entry points uh, to the to that community that we we might I mean, we might glean some learnings from uh and and um, bkms or best known methods from best practices from uh from from that community great idea thanks nicole sure all right i i wanted to mention a lot of this information um that we're looking for is actually already in the handbook. For some reason, we had a glossary. I, I just realized this just now. We had a glossary already made for a lot of the terms in the chaos project, but it's under a, a, a page called chaos committees. Um, so it wasn't very easy to find. Um, yeah, so, so I, I have a feeling we have more as well that we, uh, that we can refer to out of the handbooks. That's perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for and I did not even remember that that was in there. So thank you, Matt, that's awesome. That is, okay, cool. Yeah, maybe chaos committees is not the best title for this. <laughs> okay, uh, right on. The very last thing that I just wanted to talk about in the minute that we have, I brought this up in the community call yesterday but it's about a way to move project badging forward. So obviously we have event badging. And I, the project badging has always been kind of overcome with an issue of scale. And so one of the thoughts is that, um, that we can reach out to existing programs and I'll just say for example, outreachy. And if a, an open source project would like to participate in outreachy, one of the things that they would need to do as a participant project is go through a project DEI badging uh, effort. And so what this would do, it was it would kind of reduce the number of projects that would be part of a project badging program so that we're not badging all 50 million projects on GitHub. So we could perhaps talk to folks at Outreachy, um, I had mentioned Code for Society uh, yesterday. It's another group that, that looks to onboard projects that they support financially. Um, another could be the All In project, like All In for maintainers, as a maintainer wants to understand more about improving their own project. Like, so we could have, we could partner with existing projects or existing programs that are already filtering the number of projects to some degree and in a variety of different ways. That partnership would have to come with <laughs> not just this is something we would do, but we would definitely need additional reviewers and something like this. And I would probably, I think it's something that we would ask that uh, like a member from Outreachy or um, All In kind of participate in, in the project badging side of things, the way that folks participate in event badging. So 
anyway, I just want to put that out there. I think it's a potential path forward on project badging as a way to get our project metrics, our DEI project metrics um, into practice. So that's it. All right. I talked for one minute past. Everybody, it's great to see all of you. <laughs> Take care. I think there's a few things that we're going to do next week. We'll keep talking about metrics and we will see you then.